Shooting film is a lot of fun. Digitally scanning the negatives is the best way to bring all the benefits of digital photography to that film. I'm going to show you my workflow and how to get past some of the annoying hurdles involved in the process. This is the Canon Canoscan 9000F Mark II. It's popular, offers great quality, and is fairly cheap. It comes with various holders for 35mm, 120mm, and slides. It also comes with its own scanning software. While it's nothing to brag about, once you learn how to set it up, I find it to be the easiest to use and to generate the best results compared to third-party options. First thing to do is set up the scanner and the software. Normally this is a simple step, but Canon gave this process levels of confusion. So first, find the install disk. It's cleverly labeled and looks like this. One note here, you cannot download this, at least not anymore. I've looked and looked and found nothing. But oddly enough, when you install on a Mac, it starts a download for the installer. Whatever. By the way, besides that difference, using the software from here on out is the same on a Mac as a PC. So you start the installer, which looks like it was originally programmed in the 90s. It's going to ask you to install this other stuff. Don't. It's, it's all junk. You only need scan gear and Adobe RGB. Accept all the crap. Then connect and power on the scanner so it can get the drivers ready. Oh, that's a cute dog. Ex oh. Now you're probably thinking, all right, let's find scan gear and start scanning. Nope. There is no app to find named scan gear. Because of Canon's genius, you need to find the IJ Scan Utility, which when launched has a scan gear app built into it. Great. The rest of these buttons and functions are needed for this process. All right, let's launch scan gear and set up the preferences. You're probably thinking we would do that from the button down here. Nope. There is no ability to change file type, file path, or anything here. Oy. Close scan gear, and on the IJ scan utility, click settings. Dot dot dot. From this window, you have access to all the settings for the different functions of the IJ scan utility, including scan gear. From here, you can change the file name, format, and save path. If you want the highest quality, you're going to want to select TIFF. And the most important setting. Enable large image scans. Without this, especially when scanning 120 millimeter, it will harass you at every scan to reduce the size. It took me so long to notice that damn checkbox. Anyways, so check that box, click OK, and start scan gear. Now we can scan the film. I recommend switching to the advanced mode tab. Uh, oh, okay, Canon, thanks. It resets the settings you change in the tab to default every time you switch tabs. At least they gave us a shut up checkbox. From here, select your film type. I recommend you always scan in color, even if it's black and white film. Sometimes it'll pick up some interesting tones. I also recommend scanning at 4800 DPI. Scanning at any higher resolution doesn't offer any noticeable quality benefits and doubles your file size, a size that's already going to be pretty big to begin with. Now load the film into the scanner itself. First, remove the protective white pad from the underside of the cover. This is the part of the scanner that gives it the ability to scan film. Now load the film. Back in scan gear, click preview to start a preview scan. This is where the real benefit of scan gear comes in. It automatically finds the images pretty well. An important detail to know is that each of these little checkboxes refers to the images you actually want to scan. By default, it only selects one. You can select them individually or select them all from up here. I have several images that are upside down. Looks like I put this strip in the wrong way. To rotate or flop, select one or all and then click on whichever way you want to spin them. I rarely need to do this, but if you want to adjust the cropping, you can switch to the other view mode by clicking on the top left icon. Be mindful that switching between the view modes will lose any work you did in the previous view mode. Like if I switch back, the photos I rotated, rotated back. Back in the other view mode, you can adjust the crop with the bounding boxes. You'll probably have to rotate the view. You can then zoom in and zoom out by selecting the magnifying glass tool, then left clicking to zoom in and right clicking to zoom out. Then select the rectangle tool to adjust the crop box. Unfortunately in this view mode, the images are all rotated as one, so you can't rotate them individually. So I adjusted the photos how I wanted, and I checked all the boxes for the photos I wanted to scan. For the image settings and color adjustments, you can fiddle with these if you want, but I wouldn't bother much unless you're really having issues with how it's being scanned. And if you plan on editing your photos in Lightroom or Photoshop, these tools aren't really worth the time. I especially would not recommend the Remove Dust and Scratches feature. It just turns dust and scratches into little boogers. Finally, 
click scan and watch the images slowly pour in. In the end, you'll have some great high quality TIFF images you can edit, adjust, and share. I know I complained about Canon software, but once you figure out all the details in the workflow, it really does work well. Scanning makes shooting film much, much more fun. Thanks for watching.